Hi, I'm Wendy Monday. I'm a realtor in Nashville, Tennessee, and I post videos teaching you the best strategies to buy and sell real estate. If you'd like to optimize your real estate journey, hit that subscribe button or follow me on Instagram at Wendy Monday Selling Nashville. The current market in Nashville is really neither a buyer nor a seller's market. It's really kind of balanced out. It's normalized. And frankly, that's what we all want. When everybody feels like they're getting a good deal, you have a really smooth transaction and usually both parties do win. So what we have right now are interest rates are a little higher and inventory is a little higher. So the buyer frenzy that we had, that frothiness where like there were 20 offers on every house, we don't have that, but we still have good solid houses selling usually the first weekend if they're priced well, and some of them still do have multiple offers. Maybe not in the double digits, but some competitive offers that you know you still want to be in the game if you're gonna get that right house. But if you are looking for something that maybe is a little bit more on the fringe, you probably have some negotiation room. So many people move to Nashville for a couple of reasons. One, um, believe it or not, it's still one of the most affordable cities. Like for a top 25 major metropolitan area, Nashville is still really relatively affordable. You have a diversity of industry here, so you can be a creative class, you can do music publishing, or you can be in healthcare, or you can be in um, tourism. There's just a breadth of industry for you to come. Now the tech industry is really moving into town and that's gonna bring a whole nother wave of people. But when you think about it for like the level of dining that we have, we have an NFL team, we have an NHL team, we have a soccer team now. All of the things, all of the trappings of a big city, we have that and it's still relatively affordable Plus it's kind of in the middle of the country. So like if your family lives in New York or your family lives in Ohio or your family lives in Texas, you can just hop on a plane and get to them really easily. You're not like far flung from them. If you're looking to purchase your first house and you have no clue where to begin, the first thing is about the money. You need to talk to a mortgage lender, a trusted person that you can sit down face to face and go over this, um, like, because this is your finances and this is somebody who's going to kind of know everything about that. They're going to tell you what you can afford. You're going to be able to know exactly what it is that you're going to have to put down and what you're going to spend per month. Then, armed with that knowledge, you go out and look at houses. So that way you know the finances before you go out and look at houses. You don't fall in love with something you can't afford or you don't undersell yourself and go look at a bunch of stuff that, like, tires you out looking at it because it's just not what you want. So the first thing is figure out the money. I recently had a first time home buyer who wanted to buy something like in this neighborhood and we're in a really popular neighborhood near downtown Nashville or close by that he could put a little work into. And he looked around just for a little while. We actually found something off market, like another agent in my company had it and said, hey, I've got something coming up. We went and looked at it, snagged it before it hit the market. He loves it. He had the opportunity to do some painting. He had the opportunity to do some building with his dad, like expand the deck and like build a fire pit, that sort of thing. And now I can see like Instagram stories of him and his dog and his girlfriend like grilling on their back deck all the time. And it, it's really awesome. He got exactly what he was looking for. A lot of people have come to me recently when they felt like the market has shifted and it's gone from like this extreme, extreme seller's market to a more normal market. And I'm telling you, houses still sell. Present your house well, price it well, and it's still going to sell. Are you gonna have 20 offers like you did before? Probably not, but frankly, you're still gonna get a great price for your house. And if we had 18% appreciation last year, you're not losing that. We're just not getting another 18% on top of that, but you can sell right now. You can absolutely sell right now and you can sell for a good price. I promise you I see it every day. For example, I had a listing last weekend. We prepared it properly. We photographed it, we videoed it. We did a map of area businesses around it. We put it on the market. We got two offers the first weekend. We're under contract for over list price. So I got my license in 2008, which is probably, I think generally accepted the worst possible year you could have gotten your real estate license. And even during that downturn, like Nashville stayed steady because we never got to like these rocket ship heights of that of the last like run up to some sort of, of housing uh, calming, like the market calming. And of course that wasn't just the market calming, that was the Great Recession. We came out of that relatively unscathed. I think what you're gonna see in Nashville going forward, and even as the market normalizes and levels out, 
just the diversity of industry in this town just keeps attracting other businesses. And we also have, um, from a state level, we don't have a state income tax. And that means that people are moving their company here from a you know, high tax state, maybe it's Illinois, maybe it's California, maybe it's New York. They come here, that's why all the tech infusion is coming here right now, because we're, we're just attractive from that standpoint. So that's what's gonna help us get through this. There was a, um, a meeting last week, the Fed Chair for Nashville, um, a woman named Lauren Graff, she spoke and she said the exact same thing, like Nashville just has a nice steady market because of the diversity of industry. It is probably like any city, it's a collection of very distinct neighborhoods. So your experience in Sylvan Park is gonna be wildly different than your experience in Germantown, which is gonna be wildly different than your experience in, let's say, Inglewood in East Nashville. So if you are thinking to yourself, man, I'd really like somewhere that, um, you know, I can walk my kids to school and, and I can go to get a coffee in the morning and I can do this and I can do that, you need to kind of check out these little, it's just a collection of neighborhoods. So check out these little neighborhoods even East Nashville, which people refer to in like one lump, is a collection of really distinct micro neighborhoods. And you've got to know exactly where you fit in. I have had, so I have had clients move here and rent an Airbnb in one or two different neighborhoods for like a month at a time and then try and figure it out. And I think that's really smart. If I were gonna move to an entirely new city, I'd probably do the same kind of thing. I mean, my family, my husband and I and our child, we live in Germantown because he's a baby, we can walk right out the door, we can walk to a restaurant, we don't have to put him in a car, it's really nice. But one day we might wanna be closer to um, walking distance to an elementary school and we might move to Sylvan Park so that we can walk him to his school every day. So it just, you know, it's about your priority at the time. And just know, no house, you're, you're not forever. People say they're gonna buy their forever house, but a lot of times you move and you might be in it, especially you know the first couple of houses with your family as you grow three to five years. Again, I'm Wendy Monday. I'm a realtor in Nashville, Tennessee, and I post these videos about Nashville neighborhoods, about Nashville real estate. Comment, ask me questions. I'll tell you about the neighborhood you're looking at.